Second reflexes, a whim of iron, supernatural control and concentration, and the near suicidal drive and ambition to pilot what can only be called the fastest and deadliest racecraft in existence in the most thrilling and brutal spectator sport there is. Pod racing, the sleekest, meanest machines, all your favorite racers, veteran warriors, and hungry newcomers. Intense rivalries and exotic worlds. Experience the pulse-pounding excitement, fierce competition, tragic defeats, and heroic victories. So tune in for the fastest sport in the galaxy. Pod Racing, back with a vengeance. And hello, welcome to this review. Blah, 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 do I need to go any further? <clears throat> this is Star Wars Pod Racing Revenge. It is a PS2 game. Oh, no, sorry, Star Wars Racer Revenge teaches me to get that right. Anyway, in this game, obviously, as you saw, it is pretty much a racing game set in the Star Wars universe, in which, yeah, pod racing. It kind of goes without saying. It's pretty much a racing sport where it's kind of like Roman chariot racing, except instead of horses, it's two massive rockets. Anyway, um, I really wanted to do this one because the simple fact was is that a long time ago I used to love playing this game and you know recent well at some point I lost it and well yeah I got it back and here we are right now and I'm making you suffer by watching me making, making you watch me play it anyway um, pretty much with this game it is all about racing and upgrading your craft all those stats you can upgrade as you can probably guess by pressing the garage button and you see Watto I don't know if he's voiced by the same actor, he probably is. You've got a couple of pit droids who can spend truggots or money to get upgrades. And yeah. Anyway, there's that. But I'm gonna go through Clegg Holdfast's um, career here. I'm probably gonna fast forward this twice. Yeah, fast forward it a bit so. Therefore, we can just get through this bit quicker. And I'll talk you through a bit of main things I like about the game. Um, <clears throat> main, th main thing is that the unlockable characters, um, after, I think it's Team Topagales, once you complete the tournament the first time, you get all the characters. And I don't mean all the characters. I mean all of I don't mean, like, some of them. I mean all of them. Oop, first person mode, that's not fun. Um, so yeah. Right, anyway, the main thing about the game is that you've got two ways of winning. Either you beat everyone up to hell, and kill everyone, or you legit win. Um, but it's all depending on your skill on either one, whether you succeed in either way. Um, what else is there? I'm trying to think. Guys, right. um, there are only, f I think there's four characters that you have to do special things to unlock. Um, you have Darth Vader, Darth Maul, Anakin from Episode 1, and Zabulba from Episode 1, and you can also play as Watto as an added extra. Um, Darth Vader, I think, has the best pit, uh, has the best pod by default. Um, don't hold me to that because I haven't actually unlocked him yet. I will probably update the channel when I have unlocked him, but until then, you just have to wait. Um, TikTok. Um, right. As you can see, I have somehow made it into first place, and I'm three seconds ahead of everyone. The one thing I noticed about this game is the fact that it is incredibly easy to get ahead of the pack. But because of elastic band um, physics, if I crash once, I have lost the lead to about 15 of the other races. And there are only 8 races on this entire race, so yeah. Some of them have lapped me. 
But I have no problem with that because it's easy to take the lead again by bashing them all to hell. Um, yes, um, the one thing I do like about this game is the fact that it challenges you in a way. Because, as you can see in the bottom left corner, I think it's the bottom, yeah, it's the bottom left, um, you can see a weird little set of lights, pretty much. Green, blue. Um, that is pretty much my life, and the weird semicircle underneath it is my radar. So that if there are, if I am in the middle of the pack, I can then take them out because I know where they are behind me. However, it's kind of hard to read when you're trying to get ahead at the last minute. Um, yes. The, what, the what, m main thing I like about this game is the fact that they've added a whole new set of races to the original cast of characters in the first episode. Yes, the first episode got all the slack, but the, my favourite part by far was the pod racing. It doesn't matter if the little, the little bugger Jake Lloyd um, won the race. I don't care. It was great fun to watch. But they've also added a whole new cast of characters again. Um, I'll just quickly go through them. Take a break in the action. Um, right, he was in the. He was actually in the fit in the film, as I recall. He wasn't. He was, because he was the guy who died in one of those mush mush bleh, one of those massive mushroom rocks, whatever they were. Uh, he's the guy who didn't even start the race and almost got ran over in the second lap, as I recall. Uh, he wasn't in the he wasn't in the film. He wasn't. Definitely wasn't, because he, according to the, I can actually read the manual. Uh, Oko Ninebar, exiled from his aquatic homeworld, Oko must race in a water-filled bubble. He knows he can only return home if he becomes a champion. Kind of a dick move for his entire race to say fuck off until you win the pod racing championship. Um, you could die, okay. But the fact is, is he's a new, he's a completely new alien to the Star Wars franchise. I haven't seen a Nilabi in a very long time or uh, since this game. But that's what species he is, he's in the labby. Um, so yeah. I mean, you got all these interesting... Well, you got him, he was definitely in the um, film. Definitely in the film. Not so sure, not so sure, not so sure. Yes, he definitely was. I remember him dying because his thing exploded. Uh, definitely not, because I don't remember that ugly thing. And of course, Sebulba from this game. This is Sebulba episode whatever the episode this is meant to be. This is not Sebulba from episode 1, because Sebulba from episode 1 has an orange pod racer, not a black one. So, it's a, it's a, it's a difference that everyone should notice, you know. Anyway. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, as you saw, I just upgraded his craft, and I didn't beat any records. Um which you can find in the Hall of Fame in the options which I'll show you once I've completed the campaign once I've completed the campaign I'll show you all the other options frankly the other two options versus mode and single mode haven't really got much to show except for one of them is two player split screen something that PS3 and PS4 need or even freaking Xbox I don't give a damn anyway frankly they need it that split screen was where it was at. You know, at least you could invite a friend over. Now you don't have to invite your friend over at all and it becomes quite boring. Anyway, blah blah blah. Who cares is that? Anyway, each, as you saw, race comes with a cutscene uh, explaining and showing off the racetrack from angles that you can't see from your pod racer. And ahead again. Oh yeah, I should explain the reason why I don't use boost all the time is, as you can see in the right corner, I have a temperature gauge. If that reaches maximum and my life bar drains completely, I will blow up. So yeah, pretty much motor, pretty much motor storm physics there. This game is motor storm before it was cool. Uh, but yeah, pod racing. Um, 
Oh, I love this bit. This is amazing because you don't even need to steer with this bit because literally the tube does it for you. So as long as you don't hit a weird physics grab, which sometimes flips you off the flipping track. I have no idea why this happens. It just has happened to me about five times in a row where my pod racer has come into contact with an invisible wall and I have just plummeted to my death. And anyway, um, some of these tracks are really quick to complete, but some of them aren't, so it gives you a decent challenge. Um, so yes, completed the first lap in two seconds. Um, I think, I don't, I'm, I'm not sure because I haven't watched it in a very long time, but um, I think that's the original commentator from the first one, except without his other head, for some strange reason. Which I realised, because I swear he had two heads. So that makes me wonder, where's the other one? Because you've got the sensible one, and then you've got the, the, the delinquent sounding one. But, who knows. Anyway, just going to speed through this bit. Um, so yeah. Um, I think after the next two races, what I will do is I will... Go completely quiet. Um, okay. So yeah, um, I mean, the one thing, another thing I like about the game is the fact that all the characters are individually voice acted. Well, not individually; they don't all have an individual voice actor because that would be way too expensive. Because they're about 18, and then you've actually got the actors who played the characters the official characters in the Star Wars universe. I mean, Darth Vader is voiced by the very guy who voiced him, can't remember his name for the life of me. Uh, Sebulba, I think, is also voiced by the same actor. Jake Lloyd does episode one, Luke. No, not Luke, Anakin. Do. Um, oh, there is one character that isn't voiced by his original actor, and that's um, Anakin. Who's voiced by some snotty nosed teenager who thinks he's fucking cool being Anakin Skywalker? Frankly, I would have actually liked to see Anakin Skywalker be played by this character because, you know, it may have been a bit cooler. But, who knows? Um, they may have done what's his face a bit more justice. Um, yeah. So yeah, there are, oh yeah, there are five planets in this entire game. Five, yes, I know that's a bit small for a usual Star Wars game where there's about 15,000. Um, but yeah, there are only five. There's um, Solust, there's Tatooine. Have to have Tatooine in a proper reason. Yeah. So you have Tatooine because, yeah, that's where pod racing has to go. Um, Mon Calamari, and there's two more. Gamor, the home of the Gamorians. Shut up, water. Um, and Ryloth, the home of the Twi'lek. But, yeah, regardless, there is, I think there's three races per planet, I think. So, first one was Tatooine. Third of the... First one was Tatooine. The, the. So, yeah, three, three planets three races per planet except for Ryloth that has only two which is the Nightlands and the Bat and the Brightlands. The Brightlands, duh, it's in the sun all the time and the Bat, the, bright, the, the Nightlands are in the dark all the time. I don't know if that's a part of lore or not, I might have to check that out. But um, according to this game, Ryloth is weirdly positioned so that one side of the planet is always in the dark and one planet is always in the light. So of course there's one race on either side of the planet. But 
Yeah. That that I have no idea if that's actually true or true to the law. But I will have to investigate at a later date. Um Da -da 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 -da. Now, right, I should mention um, before pro you know, complete, you know, going completely quiet, which I will do after the next race, um, is that I will be it, it will be depending on my mood and if I'm busy or not that I will be trying to put out a video each week. One video will be the video, basically two weeks per video, per game, and the first video of each game will be me with my squeaky little voice on, um, fucking around in it. Oh, what the hell? That's an invisible wall right there. Proof of it on the pudding. Anyway, um. And we've got an anxious plastic. Right, now you can see the red the um, radar come to play. Ugly little bastard. Gonna come on. Go. Do it. Die. Haha. <laughs> anyway. Each week I will be trying to put out two weeks. Yeah. Each week I'll be trying to put out a video. First week will be a squeaky video. Second week will be me doing a review of the get video that I did a squeaky video on the previous week. Ha! Ah, God damn it, how hard is that to say? Pretty hard! Ha <laughs> Right. Ow. Oh yeah, and that's another thing I should mention is that those that life bar is not one life bar that is two life bars if i allow one of them to go you know completely zero i will die full stop now in this last like what i'm going to do on this lap is i'm going to show you a shortcut which i found actually was a shortcut i thought i just fucked up and missed the fucking turns but it turns out that this is a shortcut but what I'm going to do is I'm also going to show you the temperature problem. If I keep going, keep going, watch my life bar fall, and beep, 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 beep. There you go. That's double beeping, and if I continue to bash my pod racer around, I will blow up. I'm not going to show you that. I'm probably going to do that in single player, so I can... I don't fuck up my tournament. Ugh! I'd rather not do that. But, wait, you little bastard. Anyway, the one thing, is, the one problem is, is that all the other, all the other opponents can repair too. So that if you leave them alone long enough, they will start to repair themselves, which makes breaking the fucking record for the bloody highest crapping bloody kills fucking impossible to do because you leave them. You know, some of them are like five. Yes, I know you've seen me have six, but that's on the easier fucking ones. Some of them, you, know, you have to get six, or you don't beat the fucking record. So, of course, there's me bashing all the other bloody pod racers around, and in the end, I don't bloody get the damn thing, because they've repaired all the way around the fucking lap. Because I haven't been able to keep up with them. So, yeah. Blah, 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 who cares what? Anyway. Um. Okay, right. Quite quickly to wrap the initial review up, I frankly think that this game has quite a lot of features I'd love to see in any other racing game. You know, nowadays. You know, frankly, I'd love to see a Pod Racer Revenge 2. But that's not going to happen because I don't think the companies that made it are around anymore. Oh, wait, they're not. Well, at least one of them is. Well, one of them is doesn't own the franchise anymore. Therefore, they can't do bugger all. Blah blah blah. Good morning. Blah blah. Anyway, right. From now on, I'm gonna fast forward because, frankly, it's going to be a lot funnier for me and a lot funnier for you. And 
a lot less boring for me for you to hear my monotone voice like this. So I'm just going to speed up now and become a lot more squeakier. Anyway, thank you for letting me let my hair down. I am now going to hand you over to this game in extremely fast and pretty much get you all the way to the end so then you can see the incredibly anchor Bunta Eve race. And yeah, I will see you then, obviously. So, right, bye bye. I've done this race we will continue on with the review good and proper so I needed a break um, well not really a break if I've completed an entire flipping uh, campaign in you it must have been a few seconds for me it is now coming up to an hour 16 minutes and 25 seconds so yeah I've been at this for a while now but, I'm not doing another, do not worry. So, this is the Boonty Eve Classic, the very famous race that Anakin beats the Bulba in, in The Phantom Menace. Now, one thing you will realise when going through this track is that actually, to the game designers and programmers credit, they have actually recreated the track in as best a quality as they possibly can. They've added in all the favourite bits and all the bits that you all may remember from the film. I definitely remember most of these... Well, I remember the mushrooms of rock. Whatever they're actually called, I have not a clue. But I do remember this jump, which is also a shortcut, funnily enough. But if you watch the film, you know it's a shortcut. It's a jump. Um, 
the Dune Sea, which you see them briefly go through. Then you've got these weird little bridge things that you see Anakin have to repair in the second lap, I think. So he adds the repair function to this game. Thank you, Anakin, you little bugger. Anyway, uh, got the weird canyon, got the weird cave. weird bowl thing where tus Tuscans do shoot at you in this bit, but they don't actually do damage for some strange reason. Don't know why they were added in. But, fuck it. Then you've got this bit that everyone insists there has to be a shortcut somewhere because this is fucking ridiculous. Hairpin corners! Ah. But, one thing I have to say about this race, it does test your um, pod racer's control and your skill at controlling them. As you can see, my shit. And then a really large straight. Yay! Anyway. Um, as you were seeing as I was going through the game, I was randomly adding comments as I was going through. So, um, yeah. There's a lava level in this game, there's forest levels, I mean, this game is 2002 cheese, but, unfortunately, I have to say, I fucking love it. And, one thing I have to say that is aesthetically pleasing is that you can actually whiz around these tracks at this train speed. I don't care what you can put in the comments how fucking fast and how, the, you know, small the frame rate is. To me, I don't give a shit. To me, this is almost as good as 60 frames per second. Probably is. I don't care. I mean, I was playing it with a, a friend of mine the other day, and he said he wishes it was 60 frames. So this may mean that it's not for 60 frames. Don't give a shit. The way it moves, the way it's so easy to control, is just an absolute joy to do. I love playing this game. I mean, I spent... Um, when I first got this game, so much time completing the first tournaments for Anakin Skywalker, Oko Ninebond, Shrill Breakstrand, that pretty much I wasted the whole day playing this game. Because I was trying to beat records, I was trying to improve myself in this game. But, and like all games, they have their drawbacks. I mean, some of the shortcuts are really hard to find. Some of the shortcuts... Yep, I mean, in the um, Badlands race, um, where you surely take that shortcut in the crater through the door, if you notice, you can't define the, f the floor from the walls. So therefore, I can't tell where I can put my pod racer without banging it into a wall. And if you lose concentration for more than two seconds, you will crash in this game. Because you are travelling at 600 miles per hour, apparently. But... Be that as it may, this game is one of my childhood memories and will always hold a special place in my heart because of that. Now, the main thing is that I love, and I know I've said the main thing is that I love a lot, but the one thing I love about this game is the fact that anyone can pick it up and play it. I mean, sure it's stressful and hard to play every now and again, I mean, um, the rooms of Court Karmas Gorgol, which I commented that I didn't fucking like that race, but somehow did really well in. It depends on the pod racer that you pick. If you pick a crappy pod racer, you're going to crash all the time on that racetrack. Which I did constantly. I couldn't even make it round into the shortcut. Because my pod racer was so shitty handling, that I always ended up crashing into either the closest wall or the furthest wall. Which... That was a fucking pain in the ass. It was a pain in the ass. So, yeah. I mean, at the moment, this game is going to sit in this room, in the games room, at my house, until I get back from in whatever holiday I get back in. And I'm going to feel really sad about that, because I'm not going to be able to play this anymore. But, it means I've got something to look forward to. That's the one thing I love about this game is that no matter what, if you're ever going, if you're scheduled to play this, or you, you know your friend suggests you do it, and you're you're all against it, somewhere in the back of your head, there's a little guy going, "Yay!"
because this game is one of my... Yes, it may be one of my all-time favourites. The fact of the matter is, it's one of the best pod racing games I've played, besides the actual pod racing simulation arcade game. But it's all up to you on what you think is a good game. I'm only here to tell you that this game exists. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go quiet because there's a cutscene, which is another thing I like about this, is every tournament has a cutscene where Jobba says, well done, and then you get a weird little animation. So, I'm going to let you watch that, and then I'll come back to you. From the forbidden recesses of Jabba's palace, where the new tournament champion has been invited. We don't know quite what to expect. Jabba is notoriously fickle, and he's just seen some of his favorite drivers humiliated by the champ. the um, credits are going to roll in about two seconds and annoy me because you cannot skip them. Um, anyway, to sum up, the controls are brilliant, they, but the thing is, is that it doesn't matter if your handling on the pod is shit or not, it will respond. I don't care. No matter what you're doing, you're going to feel like you're controlling that vehicle. Um, on top of that, the way it feels, the way it feels like an actual sport game, because, I mean, most racing games these days don't actually feel like a racing game, whereas this does. This actually puts you in the fuck in the middle of the action and pits you against all these really challenging AI and challenges to overcome and defeat to unlock more characters. Now, the one thing... Uh, no, not the one thing. The graphics are pleasing, they they work, but they could do with a bit more, well, it's not like they can do with a bit more upgrading, they're not going to get a better upgrading, because the simple fact is, is that they are on a PlayStation 2, which is not updatable. Um, um, and as you saw, the player models aren't that well made, but for me, the pod races are the main bits. The way they're animated, the way they move around when you're turning, feels like you're actually controlling them. If if they didn't do that, I would feel like I was somewhere else, not playing this game. A racing game should make you feel like you're racing the vehicle that you have chosen. This game does that. It allows you to feel that. Now, and on top of that, the gameplay. Superb. Brilliant. Fun as, fun as hell. Fun, most fun game. I don't know how to describe it properly. That's what trouble I'm having because it is so fun yet so challenging that it allows someone like me to simply over, to simply beat some really simple, simple challenges. Now, I mean, this game rewards you for so much. I mean, beating the tournament, you get all the other characters apart from the main couple. I mean, Sebulba is the last character you unlock because he's meant to be the main character of this game. But of course, at the moment, you don't feel like that. He may be in the opening credits and all that, but that's that. Right. Options. Uh, do I really need to go through this? Not really. But 
in here, you have the Hall of Fame. Now, what I was saying before is that if you beat these records, you will get a lovely little bonus. And that is a new character per thing. So if you get best race in all of them, which I almost have, which sucks, you get a new character. No idea which one, I can't remember. But what I'd love is action replay, so I don't have to do that. Uh, not much else there, really. Right, this. Brilliant. They actually, I know this is sad and artists add in their own art. But the problem is, though, to me, this makes them feel, this makes it look like these people wanted you to play this game. Because the simple fact is, is the way they built and painted and drawn up the concept for all these pods makes it look like they were spending years just trying to get it right. Of course, they didn't spend years. It took them a couple of months, probably. But they did it nonetheless. They added in this artwork to make you feel like you had to do it to get these. I mean, that's Darth Vader's tie. How the fuck? It's brilliant. I love it. I want it. I can't get it. <laughs> anyway, you got, you know, pilots. I mean, you've got characters that weren't even used. I want to, I would have liked to see that, that one there. That would have been brilliant. You know, that's Anakin being a twat still. Okko, my favorite character. Kray, Zick, Shrivel, looking like an ugly junkie. And Naya Dark and all the unused guys. Planets is boring, it's just pretty much environments and shit. I mean, I think they tried to add in Coruscant. I don't know if they did. Did they add in? I don't know. Gamor. No, I don't think they did. Anyway, um, that's going to be in the review because I need the toilet. <laughs> anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply say... Thank you for watching. Oh, sorry. Um, graphics. From, no, gameplay. I'd say about 9 out of 10 for this one. Controls. 9 out of 10. No offense to other games. And the look of it. The way it looks. Nope. Yeah, that's it. The way it looks. Because it doesn't have a story. Um. I'd say a five. Anyway, thank you for watching. Um, hopefully I'll be next back next week with another squeaky video. And till then, uh, see you soon.